and sisters, the labor movement in Nova Scotia has dealt with this. Two years ago, we fought off attacks by right-wing governments to take away our right to strike for 32,000 healthcare and community services workers. This is the same struggle. The right of workers to withdraw their labor power in order to push for better concessions and better contracts must be upheld. It needs to be upheld for postal workers, for members of the CAW, and for all workers in our country. Brothers and sisters, I now want to call up one of the folks that has been there in Ottawa during this filibuster period. I'd like to call Brother Peter Stauffer, the MP for Sackville Eastern Shore, up to bring a message of solidarity. Hello, everyone, and Robert, you'd like to come on over here, buddy? Hey, hey. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I first of all want to say how proud I am of each and every one of you and your families for the struggle that you have. On behalf of our leader, Jack Layton, and our entire caucus of 103 members in the House of Commons, thank you for supporting us, trying to support you in those long debates that we had in the House of Commons. Very kind. And, and let me let me tell you, folks. Let me, thank you. No, I'm not going to stop that. You stop that over there. I didn't want to say how important this was. Anybody here from Quebec knows exactly how important St. Jean Baptiste Day or Fed National Day is in the province of Quebec. We had 59 members of our caucus, 58 of them brand new, that said with one voice, if we don't fight for the workers of Canada Post, we should not be celebrating our national holiday in Quebec. This is why we have a national holiday, support working people and those families from, from coast, from, sorry, within the regions of Quebec. They were willing to give up that sacred holiday that they, is in their DNA to be in the House of Commons through the midnight period to stand up and fight for you. And I must say that some of our candidates, are, our MPs now, are younger than 25, there's a whole whack of them. You should have heard them speak in the House of Commons. It was brilliant. It was wonderful. So, on behalf of all of them, merci beaucoup pour le service. But my own father was a letter carrier in Postal Station L in Marpole in southern Vancouver for many, many years. He was very, very proud to have that job. He actually had a job that paid medical and dental benefits back then and could look after a family of nine with my mother working as well. This was the importance of, of what we say in Newfoundland Labrador of getting the chance. The chance to have a job with benefits and with a decent pay that you can look after your family. Call that socialism. If it is, then I'm a socialist. I'm sorry. But that's the way it should be. But what the government is doing, what the government is doing here, and it started with Moya Green, we all remember her. In my, in my personal belief that this is, leads to the privatization of Canada Post. This, and I spoke to a lot of business people recently, and I said, so you're complaining about Canada Post now? Wait till it gets privatized and see the rates go up. We have, we have some of the lowest industrial postage rates in the world, yet we have a profitable corporation that until the other day paid decent benefits and wages and everything for the workers. And you folks were just trying to improve upon that. Not for yourself, those are about to retire, but for the next generation of workers coming in. This is what this struggle is all about. And it's not just Mr. Harper who did this, it's Peter McKay, Gerald Keddy, Scott Armstrong, Greg Kerr. Greg Kerr, they also did it. The Liberals have no idea where they were on this debate, but they'll show up. But the reality is, it was the Conservatives that did this to you. And I'll just give you a little hint of, if they can do this to the following, they can easily do this to you, and the next workers are next. In, in 09, in the year of 09, RCMP members were arguing or discussing, going back and forth, for pay increases and benefits for RCMP members in the country. And as you know, they don't have a union. But they agreed through the pay council that they had over a six-month negotiation of a 3.5% increase in the following three years. This was negotiated and finalized in September and October of 2009. December 23rd, in an email just before Christmas, Vic Tays, the public safety minister at that time, said in an email, your wages have been rolled, the wage increase that you were expected was rolled back to 1.5%, end of discussion. They can do that. They can do that to the people who keep our seats straight, our streets safe throughout the country and who dedicate their lives to protection of our citizens. Imagine what they can do to Air Canada workers and postal workers. And the question is, who's next? 
Who's next out there, ladies and gentlemen? Who's next? And, and I say on behalf of all of our colleagues, we're with you. This is a time we have to show solidarity among ourselves even more so. You are not the blame for the economic times. You're not the ones <laughs> that caused the financial crisis in the world. You're not the ones that did that. You're the ones that make a decent wage that you can spend that money into these small businesses that are out there. You're the ones looking after your families. You're the one doing the hockey coaching. You're the ones looking after your parents. You're the ones that go to work every day, in many cases shift work. You're the ones that deserve respect. You're the ones that deserve a good job with good pay and benefits like every Canadian deserves. So, I'm going to pass this on over to Robert right now. The great member for Dartmouth Cold Harbor, our newest MP. Give him a big hand. God bless you guys. Keep up the struggle and all the very best. Oh, and you pay taxes too. That's, that's why I didn't want to go up here with Peter. Um, sisters and brothers, I just wanted you to know, I wish we had a, had a different outcome. Um, we talked for 50 some hours about how, um, you know, it was about the postal workers, it was about workers, it was about Canadians, uh, it was about this government's ability to take away your rights. Uh, and we did everything we could over that period to try to stop them. Uh, but I want you to know that uh, we continue to be there and going to stand side by side uh, with working people from one end of this country to the other. And I, uh, and I just want to say how proud I was to be one of that 103, uh, to have had the opportunity to be there in Ottawa, to speak up on your behalf, to give voice to your grievances, uh, and to uh, stand in support of working people. Thank you very much for that opportunity, and, uh, and good luck.